Hello, I'm Jerry Burke. I'm a local historian here in Athen Rye, and we would like to take you on a tour of our town. The town had five gates. The North Gate, which is here behind me, Britain Gate, which is close to Athen Rye Abbey, Laurel Gate, which is near Kenny Park, Nicholas Gate, which is close to Athenry Catholic Church, and the final gate was Spittle Gate, which is close to Joyce's supermarket. Now, the purpose of a town gate was to control people entering and leaving the town. And at the town gate, tolls were taken on goods that were being brought into the town to be sold. And this was a town's main source of income. And what were the tolls used for? Well, they were used firstly to maintain the town walls and any other maintenance that was needed, such as paving of the streets. This particular arch dates from the 16th century and it has two features which allow us data to the 16th century. Number one is a murder hole, which was a means of defending the town gate from attackers and the second element was a porticullus or a heavy gate. Now we can see underneath the arch that it was quite a wide porticullus which was a strong defensive structure and that was the purpose of town gates in any medieval town. Athenry had a circuit of two kilometres of town wall and at various intervals along the town wall there were wall towers. Now we know there were at least six of which five survive and the purpose of the wall towers were to reinforce the town walls. And this tower behind me is a prime example of one of those towers and we can see an entrance to the tower on this side and then exiting again onto the further part of the wall. And this is a prime example and very well preserved and very accessible from this point for visitors. Now the market cross is of tabernacle type cross which is unique in Ireland. It is on a steep stepped pyramidal base and on one side it has a crucifixion scene and on the other it has a Madonna and Child scene. The purpose of the market cross was to act as a focal point within the town and it also served as a place where deals could be sealed on whatever goods were being bought, be it animals or other goods. And also it served as a focal point for the town where proclamations were read, but also on the more unpleasant side, it served as a place of execution or people were put into the stocks in this area as well. Even today, it is still a busy marketplace. Athenry Castle was built by Myler de Birmingham between 1237 and 1240. It is the oldest building in Athenry and it was the first building that the de Birminghams built to establish their power here. Now it is situated on the fording point of the River Clarine and also where three ancient kingdoms met. The castle is accessed by a wooden staircase to the first floor and that was the first phase of the building. And later in the 13th century, another floor was added and in the 15th century, gables were added to the castle. The unique features the castle has is decoration on its windows at first floor level and on a doorway as well. It was quite a cold place to live in because it didn't have any fireplaces. It was quite bleak. On one floor, there were no windows. So it is believed that a fire was lit in the middle of the floor and that the smoke escaped through an opening in the roof. And it is no wonder due to that that the de Birminghams later moved out of the castle and moved to the market square. When Myler de Birmingham had completed building the castle, he offered land to the Dominican order to set up a priory here in Athenry. A building began in 1241 and was completed in 1261. And we know at one stage that there was a population of uh, 40 in this monastery. The Priory went through a number of phases of development. The first one where there was a 45 metre long rectangular church. 
in the 1300s, North Isle and Transit were added. And in the 15th century, there were a number of other additions like the uh, heightening of the cloister at the back and also the building of a tower. Now this tower collapsed in 1845. The Abbey has quite a number of impressive grave slabs from the 17th century and later, including occupational grave slabs, which have examples of tools used by craftsmen and farmers. It also has a very impressive east window, which shows three different phases of development. The Abbey survived the dissolution of the monasteries by King Henry VIII. Uh, under Elizabeth I, it suffered some decline. In the mid 1600s, it became a university. And then later, it was occupied by Cromwellian soldiers and badly damaged. And it then was closed due to the penal laws. It has an impressive array of buildings, which is a testament to the wealth of the town at the time. This is just a snippet of what is available here and please come visit us to discover more.